Hey, welcome to the show. Feeling good with Duddy? That's me. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, yay! It's episode 98 of Feeling Good with Duddy, the show that points at the world, has a laugh, points in the mirror, has a laugh, fairest of the fair, bravest of them all, and the only live music venue in Southern California. That's us, the Feeling Good with Duddy show. Hi, I'm Jake B., host of the Morning Ride show on Facebook, co-host of this very show. Let me introduce you to my brother, the host, the guitar player, the singer for the Dirty Heads. Here he is, everybody, Duddy B. What is happening? Thank you for that amazing intro, Jake. You know what? You're welcome. Oh, my goodness. We have an amazing show for you today, guys. We have awesome guests here. We have the guys from Sideways. We have Dustin Parks here sitting with with us. Uh, we have a great You Should Be Shot segment. We have a conspiracy query. Uh, the band's going to perform some songs for us. Uh, we're, he's going to show us a riff. We're all going to show you our riffs. We have some poop stories. We have some Q&A. And we also have some listener stories today. Yeah, we're trying something yeah. new here today. Yeah. We have a listener scary story yep. that they sent in mm-hmm. that we will comment on and share with, with you. And we have a listener poop story. We do. But before we get into any of that stuff, Jake, tell them how they can support the show. All right. A couple things. Firstly, are you listening on iTunes? What is it? It's it's Apple Podcasts. That's what it is. Yes. The purple app on your phone. If you're listening there, please give us a rating. Give us a five-star rating. Write a review. That's like the major thing for us. That helps us get recommended to other podcast listeners. And then hopefully we can grow the show. Um, also, if you really like the show and you want to hear more of us talking, you go to patreon.com, feeling good with Duddy, and you'll get an episode every Monday that you don't get for free here. And then you'll get uh, live or not live, but guitar tutorials from Duddy B. And uh, you get to ask questions that we answer on the show. That's pretty much it. Wait a minute. More. More? We have merch now again. We do. That's right. Tell them what the merch address is, Duddy. It is Luke. It is fgwd.shopify.com. And uh, yeah, we, we, we made some merch. We did a thing. So that's it. That's all we ask, guys. Um, otherwise, enjoy the show. We do have a, we have an awesome band here today. Killer songs. And right now we're going to introduce the guest who's the singer of this band, the creator of this band, Sideways from Santa Barbara, Dustin Parks. Welcome to the show, bro. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me out. Thank you so much for coming. Drove all the way from Santa Barbara today. What's that, like two hours? <sighs> it's like four. Dude. Oh, it's more. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's about three. It's about three. Yeah. But if you know, if you have to okay. go through it LA. Like four. It does. Yeah. Oh, you have to go <laughs> through LA. LA can make it a seven hour yeah. journey. Yeah. If it's, That'll change your whole trip. It'll <laughs> ruin some things. But uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for of coming course, down. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm stoked to be here. And you guys ripped off like three awesome songs. One of them uh, featuring the boys from Pepper. Actually, not the boys from Pepper, but um, Kaleo, Kaleo Pepper. who I always Kaleo, yeah. fucking end up saying Kalohe. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite surfer, Kalohe and Dino. And then Kaleo, I always just mix those two up. But yeah, you guys ripped it up. And um, so here's the deal. What's going on with Sideways? Um, I mean, we're doing what we can do right now. We have, uh, a full record, mm-hmm. um, just about done, which we're stoked on. Uh, it's our debut record with, uh, with law records. We put out one before, but, uh, with the record label, it's our debut. Um, we got Cleo, we got two more good features who I can't drop just yet, but, uh, dude, the music's great and we're stoked to put it out. You're just waiting. We're just waiting. We, we don't want to put it out just yet. If we don't have a, a, a tour or anything like going on to kind of, you know, push it harder. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I just want to get it out there. It's tough. Cause it's like, you have this amazing music and you want to put it out so bad, but I feel like it's so close to really figuring out tours again and getting it going. Yeah. It's almost like, let's just hold off a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're kind of in the same exact boat right now. Yeah. It's like, we have yeah. all this music, but we're, we're just waiting a little bit longer. Exactly. I think it's just the smarter move to just yeah. wait a little bit and see how, how things happen. It's but every band that we've had on recently the, yep. has an album <laughs> yeah, chambered yeah, yeah, up. Yeah. And they're like, of course. Yeah. But exactly. Like we always say, there's about to be so much music hitting people's ears. So that's oh, yeah. the good thing. Eventually it's all going to spill out. And um, so 
that's what's going on. You guys have got yeah. the album. You're just waiting to tour. You just played some of the songs and people are going to get to hear them in a little bit, but band history. Like uh, I was talking to you before the show and you came out from Boston. You started this project yourself, right? Or no, with a producer with a buddy, buddy in Boston. Yeah, yeah. Tell us how Sideways became what it is today. Yeah. So yeah, originally from Boston, me and my buddy, Trevor Buckingham, who does all the production still to this day. Um, we just work remotely through, you know, FaceTime or whatever. Um, we started together when we were, we had bands in high school and then we were freshmen in college and we both hated going to school, especially me. So I would just, <laughs> I would just record music in my dorm room instead of go to class, obviously. And, uh, eventually, you know, we got some hits on the internet and we were like, fuck it. Let's just, let's go for it. Let's, let's bring it out to California. So I moved out alone to LA. I actually lived in Inglewood, landed in Inglewood. And, uh, eventually I had a friend in Santa Barbara who lived there and I just fell in love with the place way more mm -hmm. than, uh, Inglewood. <laughs> yeah. A little different, a little yeah. different. Um, Very different. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, from there on, I was just recording music and, uh, eventually met the guys in the band that are in it now and, uh, started playing shows and, and just getting a following and doing the thing. Come nice. out here on your own. Yeah. No band. No, no friends, no band. No friends, nothing. <laughs> yeah. You moved to Inglewood with a zero friends. Yeah, yeah, zero. Yeah, I didn't know anybody. God dang. Yeah, I would just skate down Venice Boardwalk mm -hmm. every day just to kill time. What was the plan? So the plan was just to meet some people. You already have songs. Yeah. Let me meet some people that are willing, that want to play these songs with me. Exactly. Let's play some shows. Yeah. I meet, know I'm meet in the some right kids area. kids that are good and they're like, oh, we'll play the music that you're coming out with. And uh, that was the whole goal. So maybe didn't meet anyone in Inglewood and then knew the friend in Santa Barbara, went there, yeah, met the it, guys. It took me like uh, at least a couple of years to, to meet them. I had uh, filled in with a band, just like they would bring me up and sing a couple of songs and some mm -hmm. dive bars. And uh, eventually I came across these guys from um, UCSB who are just great musicians and um, yeah, hungry, young, a little mm -hmm. younger than me. So they're ready yep. to go. Were they already playing in a band at all or? They, Casey had been touring with a couple bands. I think it was Thicker Than Thieves is one of them. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, he grew up right around this area and he was a 17th Street guy as well yeah, for, yeah. for drums. We all were yeah, 17th yeah, yeah. Street dudes yep. at our points in life. So oh, yeah. he um, yeah, moved out to Santa Barbara and we didn't have a drummer and a mutual friend connected us and it worked out great. So nice. Pretty awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. We always love the stories like that. Um, we've had a few before on the show where it's like somebody just wants to make it happen yeah. and just ups and moves out yep. to the West yeah, Coast yeah. alone. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, and we're always like, damn, dude, that's brave. Like Duddy and I were fortunate that our parents ended up moving here when we, I was, I, I turned eight here. Duddy turned well, we, six, we like, started here. We were well, born in LA, yeah. but we moved, we lived we, in Reno, we Duddy and I for Reno when oh, we, we were did. like, yeah, when yeah. we were like younger, Babies. younger, younger. And then we lived with our grandma in Woodland Hills for a year while yep. our parents tried to find a house and bam, we land in Huntington Beach. So we were so fortunate for yeah, that. I totally. Mean, you know, I always think, um, you know, if I, if we grew up in Reno, Duddy, we'd probably, I don't know, dirt bike or skateboard, but you know, <laughs> for sure, we're going to yeah. do something yeah. radical, Yeah. but here I got to surf, you know, yep. we, yeah, we got yeah. to just get, and that's, we're so lucky. And then the music culture that we were lucky enough yeah, to be around. Chair. That's why it's I knew I had to come out of California. Yep. It's, yep. Just, it's just the, it's the play. It's the way to go. And it's working. Yes. You yeah. It's starting to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so, pretty. Go sorry. No, go ahead, Dad. No, I was, I was just going to, we were talking earlier and we, we had started that. We were talking about playing shows and whatnot. And, uh, and we, and we had that segment that we had started the band etiquette situation and you had such a great yes, one. Yes. And for, you, for those of you who are listening, yeah, that don't know them. exactly what I'm talking about is we started <laughs> a new segment last episode and it's called band etiquette. And it's things you see from the stage as the band that you see happening in the crowd. And you're just like, Oh, come on guys, let's stop this. This is insane. <laughs> and he told us such a great one earlier. So you want to just fill him in a little yeah. bit of what you were saying. Uh, yeah. My biggest pet peeve of all time. And you can, I mean, you can be in a band and see this, or you can be at a con and and see this next to you the fucking guy yelling in the girl's ear next to him just hitting on her so hard she wants nothing to do with the guy and it's just like it's it's cringy it's the cringiest thing i've ever seen and it's hilarious it was so great when you you said that. i was like oh my god nailed <laughs> it's perfect i've seen this the girl's just trying to have fun she's just dancing yeah. she's with her girlfriends they're dancing they're singing along and then the creepo drunk dude rolls in and just starts screaming and what's up girl yeah. like yeah what are you doing after that, you can only imagine the guy being like, Hey, like, babe, I'm in a band too. Do you like these guys? Oh, yeah. yeah, if you like this, yeah, wait yeah, till you, you catch what I'm out, doing, yeah, exactly. But and it's all you can see it start. So, 
Real quick, too, the band etiquette thing. Duddy firstly called out uh, shirtless dudes who are on top of other dudes' shoulders. Like, it's nobody always, at a show wants I that. I feel like anytime I see a guy on top of another guy's shoulders, he's always buff. Always buff, <laughs> always sweaty. <laughs> and he's always... Potential back knee. But he's always bigger and buffer, because that's so why he's... Yes. Get on my huge buddy's shoulders. I'm also huge. Let's tromp around knocking everyone's beer yeah. over because that's what people want. And right? yeah, to add to the shirtless guy holding a beer on uh, someone's shirt. And then it just everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Johnny uh, just Appleseed. Putting out course, everybody's yeah. joints and cigarettes. Just trying just to get to the front on. of the concert. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> just the worst. So oh. that was the first one. And then we had someone that brought up, um, they uh, hate when they see a girl maybe crowd surfing and guys are groping them. And we're like, absolutely. It's yeah. every time. It's every, every time, time a girl, girl crowd surfs. surfs yeah. She yeah. gets so groped. And I'm wondering yes. if they if it, they don't know or it's, they, they like it. Or I mean, like, I think yeah, they know, yeah. get groped. There's a couple that really reach for it. It's a reacher, yeah. dude. And uh, just a double hand twister. No, it's I a, mean the girls. I'm saying, do the girls, is it like their first time they don't know they're about oh, to get groped? So I they're see. like, yay! I'm, and... Or they're like, dude, I love crowd surfing because I just get felt it up. It becomes I, the worst experience of their lives for some of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you see a girl crowd surf twice, oh, yeah. she loves it. Okay. If it's once and then a horrified look and a shuffling she to the back, like, yeah. well, then yeah, this was a this, this she assault. She would have rather yeah. hit the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess. Hey, yeah. If you're into it, too. Yeah. If you see, so what we're it. saying is if you see a girl crowd surf more than one time, when she lands, go yell in her ear. Yeah, get into her ear. Get quick. right up in there and try yes. and talk to her. Yeah. But so those are the only two we had before today. But I kind of look, this is my favorite one because it's it, perfect. it hits on a couple levels. Yes, you see the dude that's hitting on the chick and you can see her body language is I'm 100% not interested. The dude is leaning in, yelling into her ear. It is a funny thing to see from the yeah, stage. Yeah, hilarious. And, um, that the, the yelling into the ear thing surpasses even the hitting on a chick uh, or oh, yeah. any. I forgot about that part of live shows until you said it. Yeah. Where even your best friend oh, is totally. next to you and he's just leaning and yelling to try <laughs> yeah. to get over the music and it's painful. It is. Yeah, it is. T tell me in between songs. Band etiquette. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Band etiquette is great. And you know what? I love that. And in this, the yelling kind of brings me into this next little thing I want to talk about, Jake. Life etiquette, Daddy? Life etiquette. I actually have a you should be shot today. Shot. Yes. I was you reaching for the slap and then you should be curveballed it. Shot. <laughs> you should be shot. Yeah. Oh, we right. have live drops today, people. <laughs> yep. That's why it's slower than normal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I went out to eat with my family and I saw this happening. It was in, you know, it was in like my, my two o'clock vision and the bar's over at my two o'clock and I just see it happen. And there's this group of like, you know, early twenties, it's like four or five of them. They're cool. They're, they're chilling. They're having drinks at the bar. But then I noticed, obviously there's two of them that are a couple mm -hmm. and they start to argue and they argue enough to where I could hear them arguing. And I'm not even in the bar area. I'm sitting over at the table with my family and I could see it. And they're not like screaming, but they're full on arguing. Like they're obviously mad at each other. They're pointing at each other. They're doing the stuff. And which is already the worst thing in the world when couples argue and fight in public. But then I yes. see them doing what is the worst. And I remember I had friends growing up that would do this. I had friends that were in just terrible relationships. I would argue every single night, everywhere we went, they argue, they make a scene and they're hitting their friends, like pointing, trying to get their friends involved in like, did you hear what she what the fucking she said? And <laughs> trying to get their friends to jump in onto into their argument. And just, ah, oh. so that's my thing. Couples who argue all the time in public, they need to be shot. Bam. <laughs> not I, killed. Yeah, agreed. Not killed. It's a graze. It's a graze. Luke wanted me to shoot them in the mouth. And I was like, Luke, that would kill them, Luke. Jesus. I will graze their lips. I'll graze the lips. Wow. A not lip dead, graze. Not dead. Going to have to eat only cold stuff for a few <laughs> yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah. You'll be fine. Do they lose their lips? Is this just uh, that the lips get heated up to their burn? It's like, yes. Yeah, it's right so, it's such a graze. It's God, like sizzling. Dang, daddy, it's very sinister. hot. It's, like, it's going to burn their lips. Mm -hmm. And they're going to know how close they were to dying. Yes. Because of arguing in public. The so public this is argument, you should be shot. Public argument, you should be shot. I 100% agree. This is a horrifying, awkward thing. It makes, I love watching it from a distance, actually. If, were, were you, 
Were you kind of? I have loved watching. You it, couldn't have been happier. I couldn't take my eyes off. My wife was like, "What are you looking at?" Because she's, you know, sitting. I'm looking at my wife, so she's not seeing this. And I'm mm-hmm. doing one of those things where you're looking at her, but every two seconds, my eyes glance back over in that mm-hmm. other direction. And I kept watching. Like, what are you looking? at? I'm like, dude, this couple over here is just totally arguing, and I can't stop watching. And, and it just made me think because I, I'm not going to name any names, but I had multiple mm-hmm. friends growing up that were in relationships where you're just like, fuck. Every single in time we public. hang out, you guys argue in public, and it's so embarrassing. How? Do, what's your stance <laughs> on public arguments between <sighs> it's, it's, between I lovers? Hate it. Yeah, it's the yeah. worst. <laughs> I, I love mean, it. I, I, I can't deny it. I've been there before, oh, but, yeah. but not to that extent. I mean, oh. there's some people that are so brutal about it. Oh like, God! If I get it, I'm just like, let's walk away a little bit. We're not going to do it in Dude, fucking in front I, of everybody at the bar. Me. Yes, like, and if also you, just chill the fuck out. Yes. You must drag (laughs) it. You must drag the other person. And this is, it doesn't even have to be your girlfriend, boyfriend, what it's like a friend, anything where it's just an full bomb public thing. You must drag the other person to a dark corner where no one can see it has to happen. And then the involving of the friends. That's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. You're just like hands whoa, immediately whoa, whoa. go I up. Want, I am yeah. not interested. Yeah, I want nothing to do with this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember I'm, that Dane Cook joke when he's like, "You hear?" He's all, "I love hearing people's arguments at the store when they're on the next aisle." That's a great Dane <laughs> oh, Cook bit. Yeah. He's all, "I listen in." He's all, "I'll throw things in to encourage the argument." Oh, that's good. Then, <laughs> because yeah, and he said he called the chick a twat, and then the boyfriend heard it and said, "Twat, that's a good word, man." Yeah, you're a twat. You know, like, <laughs> he helps the arguments get worse. Like, oh man, I should have uh, done that. You should have thrown that in. I like, just walked by and went, "She's right." <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. See, see that guy. Thanks, bro. And then it fires it up a lot, Daddy. <laughs> wow, mm-hmm. you should be shot. We're starting out hot and heavy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Band mm-hmm. etiquette. I like it. I like it. It's all to help people, really, because... I'm just trying to teach people. Yeah, don't yell in people's ears at the shows. Don't argue in public. Uh, I think we've done a lot for society. Yeah, the guy who yells already. at the chick in the ear in the show is the guy who yells at his girlfriend as well at the it's bar. 100%. <laughs> it's the same Dude, thing. 100%. It's the same guy. It's, it's a good. foreshadowing. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. You will be yelled at forever by this yes, guy. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Music or not, he's going to be yelling in your ear. <laughs> you meet a nice guy, ladies listening, or, you know, fellas, whoever's having sex with people. If the other person that you might want to have sex with, if they wait in between the song and then whisper at you, hey, how's the show going for you? That's the person that's that the you yeah. live with yeah. for a year and a half, get a cat together, and then break up. That's the person, everybody. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, you guys, this is where it gets super favorite Dustin? Everybody's favorite segment are you is re- coming up. Dustin's? Which Dustin? Yes. Dustin's? Are you guys ready? <laughs> yeah. We're ready. The Dustin's. All this right. This is Conspiracy Query. Dustin Duddy. Okay. We'll call you Duddy because it's That's two Dustin's. I like that name anyway. Can I be Duddy P? Sure. Duddy P, dude. <laughs> Duddy P and Duddy B. I actually really like that a lot. Yes, you're Duddy P from now on. So awesome. boys, Duddies. It's well, a Duddy dream P, of mine. Duddy P, I have something to tell you. <laughs> this is not a conspiracy theory, okay? Okay. You know what that is, right, Duddy P? A conspiracy, you know conspiracy theory? Yes. Is? Yes, I do. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, this is not that. Duddy P, tell them what you're doing. Okay. This is, I didn't come up with this. I'm not trying to convince you that this is real. I didn't uh, find this on the internet. I did find this on the yeah, internet. We found it on the internet. That the was internet. a lie. What I'm trying to say is that this is a conspiracy query. He's not telling you, have you heard this? Do check this. He's asking you, do you believe this shit? It's a lot well, what safer. What I'm really asking is, do you believe in conspiracy queries? Thank you, Duddy. <laughs> okay. B. Well, let's see. You guys know we're taking you around the entire world. Around the globe, really. We spin the globe. I put my finger down. Wherever it lands is where I go to find these stories. And mm-hmm. this one comes you know, from our friends at Thrillist.com. Of course. And it took us all the way to our nation's capital, Kentucky. Get out of here. Yeah. yeah. And this one is called The Witch Girl of Pilot's Knob. <laughs> Could have came up with a better name, but all right. All Why right. is this creepy? Just looking at the picture of young Mary Evelyn Ford's grave feels a bit unnerving. With a series of interlocking white crosses forming a fence around a pit of gravel and the bars appearing unnaturally bent in some places. Then you hear the alleged backstory. A mother and daughter, both accused of witchcraft, were burned at the stake in 1916. 
with the mother's charred remains being carried to a far off location while the daughter was buried in a steel lined coffin covered in stone encased in crosses to prevent her escape. Some have claimed to witness tiny footprints appearing in the gravel or even a young ghostly figure trying to escape the gravesite. Kid ghosts, as we know, are the creepiest ghosts, Jake. Wow. That's a pretty horrifying tale. Yeah. So it's really just a super creepy grave site. It's a creepy grave site. Well, they took the mom. They, they burned a mom and daughter who they thought were witches for. Sure. Cris- and then that's what you do back then. <laughs> they took the mom yeah. far away. Well, yeah. Get her out of here. And they buried the daughter there. Mm-hmm. Surrounded it with uh, crosses and steel bars to keep her in. And uh, the bars are all bent. So has she escaped or has the mother come back Uh, to find her? Interesting. Wow. Okay. And people see little ghosts like leaving the gravesite and stuff. And Mm. then they, and then they make a little statement at the end, which I'm not sure everyone on earth agrees with. Cause as we all know, like kid ghosts, as we all know, this is how they wrote it are the creepiest ghosts. Yeah. I kind of don't agree. No. I mean, I remember there was like a half a moment there in like the late nineties where every oh, yeah. horror movie was like a youthful ghost. And remember there was the, the Japanese one where the boy just opened his mouth real wide. Oh, and, just, oh, and then like the camera cuts away and I'm like, oh, okay. put the kid in the hallway and we'll do a thing. It'll be scary. You got yeah. the two twin daughters in the shining. We like lot that. Scarier ghosts than like little kid ghosts. Yeah. Like a full grown gnarly, huge ghost would be yeah, scarier like- to me than a kid ghost. Better chance of kicking that ghost's ass all over the house, <laughs> little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So I don't know. I don't even know where. Let's let's see where this came from. Yeah, because I'm this. This well, is weird one. It's a weird one. While stories about the gravesite go back decades and naturally increased in detail with the growth of the internet, of course, there's not much evidence that anyone was buried at the stake for witchcraft <laughs> in the area in 1916. Even back then. That was generally big news. Mary Evelyn Ford really did die a tragic young death, but the state cause of death is, uh, what is that? Wow. Yeah, I was going to say, I can't say that per- word. Pertonitis? What? Uh, well, I don't know. I think that's the closest. Pertonitis? Jeez, yeah. I don't know what that word is. Uh, an inflammation of the stomach lining. Okay, oh, that's what you. that is. Uh, it's amazing what a truly unnerving gravesite can do for the imagination. We still wouldn't want to be near it at night. So wait, I don't get it though. So is there bent bars? Is there crosses? Yeah, weird. Yes. I think the gravesite is creepy. It looks creepy. They're just saying that there's no proof that people were burning witches at the stake back then. So they're not sure about that part of the story, right? And they're just saying, hey, in the end, it just means a, a creepy gravesite is creepy and people make up stories about it. Is that, is that what they're saying? I'd like to believe that there's a, you know, a mother ghost came back, grabbed her daughter. Dude, here's the deal. Once again, we're dealing with a small community ravaged by the lockdowns (laughs) and pilots knob doesn't want visitors to not come to town. Uh, Right. How do we get people to come to pilots knob? (laughs) And then they are trying to cover it up too. Now, like we never burned witches here at pirates knob. It's just really pirates knob. pirates knob would be dope. Oh, pilots knob. I'm sorry. Pilots knob. (laughs) Look, that's not nearly as cool as pirates. If you just take witch out of this, it just sounds like a, a, uh, like a airplane pilot is getting knobbed off by a (laughs) stewardess on the the girl in the pilots knob. (laughs) Oh, okay. This is your captain speaking, but (laughs) (laughs) all story has changed. Uh, I'm just picturing a pilot. Hey Jake, where do you find a pilot's knob? In his cockpit. Hey! <laughs> Duddy. <laughs> that was a weird one, dude. <laughs> that was a weird one. Usually we have like three-legged people smashing into cars. This yeah, one was like, was could there be a gravestone right somewhere? Too. Yeah. Weird. I, I guess but, there's only one question is, do you believe if you go to pilot's knob? <laughs> there's a baby. I can't even do this one. Ever. Dude, there is a place called pilot's knob. Yeah. Why? Luke, give us the meaning of pilot's knob, please. Or just look up this place. I need the fucking location. I need the population. I think this story came. They're like, we need more tourism in pilot's yeah. knob. Well, tell a witch story. 
All right. He'll never find Luke's it. Luke's looking He'll shit never up, find dude. It. Oh, it's beautiful. It is. It does Lord. look nice. Yeah. Okay. Pilot's okay. Knob yeah. is an absolute oasis wonderland. Look at it. It's that a Shangri-La. So and look at everywhere I see it. It's not even Pilot's Knob. It's Pilot Knob. Pilot Knob. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That is a really bad name for a place. That's just yeah. a funky name. But uh, oh, guess man. what, Duddy? What's up? Add it to the tour. We're going to have to go to Pilot Knob. <laughs> yeah. Right after Tagus. When Sideways is on tour, we'll give you guys all the locations. Each one of our little conspiracy queries that we go over, we, we've we marked the little city. And they're a town. They're always yeah, yeah. little towns. And, and you know, nobody's ever going to go there. But we'll talk about it. <laughs> We're going to do a tour through them all. But oh my but God. we do dude. have an extra bonus thing right now. Let's do it. Remember how we told you guys we're doing a new thing with the listener stories earlier in this show? Well, we are. And this is what <laughs> happened. We told you and we are. We asked for the listeners to send us in their own scary stories and their own pant shitting stories. And then maybe we'll feature them on our show if we don't think you're lying and if they're not boring and if they're not like eight minutes long, because we're not going to live. You guys know the rules. We have one. Okay. A listener uh, by the name of Kristen Haggett. She's a big time listener. Um, big time participator on the FGWD bunker on Facebook. Huh, daddy? Yes. She She's is. a poster over there. She has sent us in her own story. It's not necessarily a monster story. Well, it kind of is. I'll just hit play and we're going to listen to it right along with you guys. This is a good one. I haven't heard this yet. You have not. Neither of the Dustins have heard this. I have previewed it. We're duddies. Yeah. We sorry. talked about this earlier. <laughs> Duddy B and Duddy P. Get ready because this is... Listener story. I don't know. I was like, first thing I could think of. I like it. All right, guys. The scariest event in my life was the day I found out my next door neighbor was none other than Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer. I grew up for the first half of my childhood in Auburn, Washington. Growing up, there was a house behind mine that was surrounded in heavy woods and only chicken wire separating that property in my backyard. My neighbor was a very quiet and mysterious guy and he had always creeped me out when I was a kid, even prompting my mother to tell me, she sounds like she should work for Dateline. Yeah, Ice dude, what? When I listened really to this good. originally, it's so serious, I said that to Luke. <laughs> Let's take it back to the top because whoa, whoa, whoa. all the way to the top. No, nah, okay, I'll play it through <laughs> right here. But the way she starts it out was finding out that my neighbor was none other yeah. than. I was like. Well, look Rick. at this guy, dude. She's good. Mind of a monster. All right, She's good, guys. All right, let's continue. He's a nice Christian man, and I had nothing to be scared of. The only nice part about having him as a neighbor would be that his little dog would break into my yard and I'd get to play with it until he would come by and grab his dog. One day, when I was probably about four years old, I was playing in my backyard and he was up on his backhoe clearing out some trees. I ended up just standing there in my yard and I looked up at him and he looked down at me and we made eye contact. And it was the scariest moment of my life. I saw nothing but pure evil and blackness in his eyes. I knew that there was just something horrible about him, but my young mind couldn't even begin to imagine how horrible he really was. When I was nine years old, we ended up getting a bunch of police and news reporters at our door. And I asked my mom about what was going on. And she told me that our neighbor the same man that she told me years before was a nice Christian man, was in fact Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer, who at that point was suspected in the murders of 49 women. Now he has confessed Damn. to murdering over 100. There's my story. Oh. Damn. Wow. When I heard that earlier, I was like, that is That's heavy. so good That's and so, so good. well told by her. Kristen Haggett, well Coming done. with the heat. Gosh. Next, Where do we go from that? That was an yeah. amazing story. Thank you for sharing that Yeah, the us. moment when she said, you know, like, I looked up and he looked down at me and we caught eye yeah. contact. Oh, creep me out. I had a little goosey bumpy. Well, yeah. She gave me the goosey. Reminds me of like the <laughs> put the lotion on the skin guy. Like, you know, yeah, drop yeah, a dude. joke on this one, but <laughs> holy shit. Put the lotion. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And, and Luke has pulled up pictures of this dude. He is horrifying looking. Wow. You can, there's yeah, like one dude. photo where he looks nice. Look at the blue shirt yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one that's photo. Like, <laughs> an acting debut yeah, photo. Yeah, that oh. totally looks like <laughs> hey, headshot. Every other photo, he definitely murdered everyone on earth twice. Wow. Yeah. He wow. Said, so she said that he confessed to killing over a hundred women. 
Yikes, wow. dude. That's terrible. Woo. Well, well you, we literally yeah. asked people this morning if yeah. they could send in some of these stories and, and she got this one in that fast. And honestly, that was one of the coolest things things that ever was on yeah. this show yeah. that was great that was better than our show that was way better than our show <laughs> yeah so yeah you guys if you're listening if you have i mean good luck following that one right every every yeah, listener yeah, who's yeah. Li- there's no yeah. way yeah so if you guys live next door to like jeffrey dahmer hit us up <laughs> yeah but, um, My, you know, uh, uncle send was him. hitler <laughs> 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 oh my god oh man my so, uncle was none other than hitler <laughs> <laughs> wow oh uh, great that job story was awesome and yeah. you know what else is awesome jake what is the band sideways oh absolutely that's yeah, so nice you guys they're gonna put they're gonna play <laughs> some music for us let's they, get into this first one what's this first one called that we're gonna get into uh we're this gonna, gonna do the, the Clayo Clayo jam. One? Yeah. yeah it's called we won't run Featuring Cleo Pepper. We just dropped it, I think about a month or two ago. So here it is. Right on. Enjoy. All right, we're here with Sideways, Cleo from Pepper, and this one's called We Won't Run. Who they try to catch, who they gonna threat? The world is burning down like a cigarette. We lose and feeling, call it 30 Percocet. I be standing upon the ground so you won't catch me running yet. Drive by, all we do is wonder why. Got them people with the badge shooting bullets to the sky. Dirty president, how is all the money spent? How is everything so lost up in an argument? I can't sleep, can't eat, I can't breathe. Madness, so we try and take it carefully. Over a million screaming that they're finally done. But we ain't gonna run. We refuse to be what they wanted us to be. We are who we are, that's the way it's gonna be. They don't want to see us move in unity. Let's take a look around, we got everything we need. Don't let them fool you or let them abuse you cause we won't run, we won't run away. Yeah, don't let them stop you, no, no matter what they do cause and we won't run. We won't run away, and we won't run away. How can I suffocate until I die? All the hatred in the eye brings the devil from inside. As we stand, there's a gun up in their hand telling us to back down while we scream and fuck the man. We can't eat, can't sleep, we can't breathe. So why would I have to do what you believe? Over a million screaming that they're finally done. But we ain't gonna run We refuse to be what they wanted us to be We are who we are, that's the way it's gonna be They don't wanna see us move in unity Just take a look around, we got everything we need Don't let them fool you or Let them abuse you cause We won't run, we won't run away Yeah don't let them stop you, no, no matter what they do, cause we won't run, we won't run away, and we won't run away. We won't run, we won't run away, and we won't run away. We won't run, we won't run away, and we won't run away. Run away And you won't catch me running yet We won't run away Yeah, we won't run away We won't run away And you won't catch me running yet That was awesome. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks for having us. Oh, we're being man. heckled side yeah, stage guys. guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the drinking, rest of the band. They're drinking all the Fernet over there. I saw yeah. him pour a shot. Oh no. What <laughs> yeah. do you guys think of the Fernet? That's great. 
great. Uh, you love it. Wow. A, I love Fernet. Okay. It's like my favorite wow. shot. Not many people are into that. I think it's a, I think it's a bartender thing. If you work in the industry, everybody loves Fernet. You're, you are a bartender. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, before we did the show, he's like, do you mind if I make a drink, you know, really quick? I'm like, go ahead and have whatever you want. I'm like, you know what? I'll have one with you. I'm not going to let you drink alone. So he made us some vodka sodas. It's the strongest drink I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> so you're one of the bartenders that people want to get. Yeah, yeah. The place we, our, our buddies and manager there that we, we actually all, me and Casey both fill in at, uh, we just pour heavy hands for nice. everybody. It's just, oh my it's just God. like a little dive bar in Santa Barbara. It's What's like, it called? It's called the James Joyce. Oh, the James yeah, Joyce. Yeah, it's Guinness and, and Jameson shots. If you want to absolutely <laughs> black out, yes, go yes. there. Uh, but I don't actually work there. I'm a musician. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just for fun, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. But, um, yeah. You know Dude, what? There hasn't been a lot of shows lately, all right? Yeah. You got to do yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Man. Jeez. Yeah, don't judge me. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, though. When you go to a bar and you order a drink and the bartender pours you a stiff one, does that feel good, Jake? You know it oh, does, Daddy. It feels it good. Feels good. And you know what else feels good? Our sponsors. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Wait, I don't know. If, yeah, that is yeah, a weird you know thing. It feels but... good. Our sponsors. Well, it does feel good because this one feels great. Koi CBD. I love this product. Nice I love this company. You guys have heard it a million times. Uh, I take these drops every morning. I do. I love the way it makes me feel. It really helps me with my aches and pains I get in my wrists and in my fingers and my hands from, you know, I think playing guitar and just sports my whole life. I get bad cramps in my hands, but ever since I started a steady diet of CBD, I've noticed it, it happens a lot less, but it still does every now and then it creeps back in and they've got so many amazing like creams and rubs that you can put on that just, it's one of those things where you put it on, you don't think about it 20 minutes later, you're like, oh shit. Pain gone. Pain gone. But um, awesome. I talked about this the last two weeks and I've had a few people actually hit me up already and say, oh my God, thank you so much for telling me about this. I seen such a difference in my dog. This mm -hmm. is amazing. They have CBD for your pets and it works so great. They have like chews. I give my dog that, but they also have an amazing, it's like a spray. And obviously I don't know what it tastes like. I'm not spraying dog CBD in my mouth, although it's probably fine for Why me. Why not? Haven't done it, but I spray this. I gave her like two sprays on just on her food when I give it to her. And she just immediately runs over. My dog's not one of those dogs that like, right when I put food in the bowl, she runs over and just smashes it down. She's like, whatever. She takes a couple of bites here and there. But when I spray the CBD spray on it, she loves it. She goes right there and eats it. And I totally noticed a difference in like her hips and stuff. Uh, she has hip pains after I started giving it to her. So give CBD a try. Give your pets CBD a try at KoiCBD.com. Put in code feelgood at checkout and you will get 15% off your first order. Nice. I'm going to have to try it. I've never tried it, actually. You've never tried CBD? Never tried it. Oh, you, you have, have to. to. Give, you have to give me a sample. I'm going to give you some CBD. <laughs> okay, right on. 100%. I do love the CBD, but I've never tried this this brand here. Oh, yeah. Koi CBD is great, awesome. man. They, they've literally been with this podcast since day one. Yeah. Oh, right Two on. Years. Right on. Well, the number one legends. It. Yes. Also, speaking of legends, plugins, keychains, they came up with this amazing product. It's called the Jack Rack, and this thing is so awesome. It's just like a replica of an amp head. They have Marshall ones, they have Fender ones, and it's a, you mount it on your wall, and it, uh, it's a keychain. It's a key holder, so it comes with four keychains. It looks like a quarter-inch cable that you would plug into your guitar, the other end in, in, into your amp. You put your keys on it. When you get home, you just plug your keys in to your Sick. amp head that's on your wall you'll never lose your keys again and i can't tell you how many times people have come to my house and just be like oh my god that's so awesome where did you get that <laughs> and i tell them where do what do i tell them jake when they ask where to get it i tell them you can get it at plugins keychains.com and that's plural and with a z it's p-l-u-g-i-n-z.com or keychains.com. And if you put in code uh, Duddy B at checkout you're going to get 20 percent off of every <laughs> single order you make for the rest of your entire life you turned into like an 80s radio Yeah, dude. I was guy. very impressed. I, <laughs> like, ask me. And I tell him, Jake, I tell him. I feel like I needed that thing on the wall. <laughs> he went into that voice. Yeah. A dot com. <laughs> and I tell him, Jake, we'll be back after. I was like, wow, oh, daddy. You heard it here, people. A dot com. God damn, you just sold me on it. Dude. That <laughs> yeah. was, that was good. <laughs> Oh, oh Daddy B, God. it's everyone's favorite time of day and show. What's that? It's show us your riff. Oh, oh nice. man. Yeah, that's where we pick up this little guitar and we try to play a riff. You guys know what it is. It's a very is simple concept. Riff? 
Heavy any riff, riff time. Any we, riff. We, we feel like everyone that plays guitar, they have that thing like right when they grab a guitar, they just like do a little thing. <sighs> even if it's not going to be Bob, I'm going gonna, gonna to think of something super even random. If, yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, anything you want. I don't know where to go. I'm going to Spain oh, again, Daddy. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wrote it for the show. That was that sick. Castlevania. <laughs> yeah. I told everyone I didn't prove. I'm not. I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's my riff. Yep. All right. <laughs> Let's see what I got here. I'm oh. going to top you. Oh, good. Good, good, good. <laughs> Get it up there near that mic a little bit. That to be dude, you just here. won no the way. day. No, dude, you just won. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again, because that's that, that was Blink One Eighty Two. Oh my god! No, I wrote that. Nice. Oh, that's really <laughs> I'm good. Just here, I'll help you with the mic. <laughs> that was fucking radical. <laughs> Gone. Yeah, it was nice. a Friday night. <laughs> Sing I fucking wish I knew the words, and we're fucking feeling right. Yeah, nice. and I turned off my TV. That, that is, was wow. sweet. Man, you should, uh, you should you know, show yeah. that to some people. We could probably get that on the radio. <laughs> That's a tight riff. <laughs> That's. Uh, you know what else is sick? Do you mind if I use that riff for oh my, my band? God. <laughs> I have a good idea for a band name. Blank. We can use that no. riff. I don't think you can, because Blink's probably taken. Add something to that. Let's just throw out some random numbers. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> 182 or something. Perfect. Blink 182. Play that riff. We got a band. Yeah. We've made Wait, fun of Blink 182. Take our clothes off. We've, yeah, we've made fun of Blink on the show awesome. in a loving way. Oh, yeah. They're, they're yeah. amazing. Which one? Oh, it was. Oh, yeah. It was this song. It was the aggressiveness of the vocals oh. on this song. How are you? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the lyrics didn't make sense. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that, yeah, 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 that was the lyric. Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. And I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my mind was yeah. blown. And then the, and I'm so sorry. And then the word yed. We were introduced yes. to the word yed. yed. Inside my yad. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa. That was good. That was good. Definitely yad. 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 Mm -hmm. And I mean, uh, come on. They fucking rip. Fucking just iconic, too. The so good. said yad is so yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, there's, a, there's another guy saying yad out there oh, now. Oh, no. It's the... Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Kelly. Kelly. In yes. my yad. Yeah. In, in my yad. Well, he's working with Travis Barker, so he just had to go with the yad. Wow. I didn't even put that together. Yeah. So it's uh. Travis Barker's fault. We're blaming the singers. <laughs> yeah. well, God damn it, that, Trav. Did did Blink's yad come before Travis? Oh. No, no, no. no. That, that was a post Travis. Post -trav. I think the guy was like, hey, maybe let's take that one again because you said yed instead yeah. of head, you know? <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah, like, no, no one raised their it. hand in the studio. Yeah. Uh, what did you say, yed? Uh, I like have it. I been yeah. it. Have I been saying it wrong this whole time? <laughs> it must have been a horrifying creative environment. Nobody was like, no, just put your fucking, yeah. just leave it. Uh, leave I'm it. saying, I'm saying head. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> Look at us making fun of like one of the biggest hits ever yeah i'm gonna yeah. start saying yet in every goddamn I mean, song they I were make. yet of their time come on <laughs> oh, oh, look at that a late applause drop for daddy on that wow oh my god so that's Speaking definitely job, what we had planned to do right now well what are we going into we did show us your riff and now we're gonna go into some poop stories yeah they got a poop story guys oh so dustin the poop story is not you who's pooped their pants uh, i think it's yeah casey curtahan casey's oh, coming casey's on over good. casey's cutting in <laughs> drum man all right dustin's gonna have to is give casey his mic for a sec right. you can all put right. those headphones on if you like you don't even need them really welcome all right we got casey here guys from sideways and he's going to tell us an electrifying story about when he should oh himself. man the mic's all loose on yeah, poor no, casey oh, stoked oh. to be here that's all right make it work oh twist it all the way around like uh yeah there you go back at you nice Bam -a. yeah you guys for the listeners he's twisting the mic around we're tightening it and we've got it Slide it right back at you. Yeah. Pull it at you a little more. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right, let's hear this. And and uh, after we hear his story, we actually have two listeners. No, we're gonna do two. We're doing two, right, Luke? We're no, doing we're both. doing Kimmy. We have one. Just one? Yeah, we oh, have okay. one from the 
from the boys and then one from a all right, listener. All right, yeah. all right, all right. All right. So here we go. Yeah, okay. So this all starts. <laughs> uh, so I'm at uh, my buddy's, I'm at my buddy's parents' cabin up in uh, up in the mountains. It's for like Ooh. a little Christmas getaway kind of type deal. Mountain poop. Oh, this is I like it already. <laughs> yeah, it's the elevation. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so um, and so, you know, it's one of those things you're drinking all day, like that kind of type deal. And I sit down for dinner, and my buddy's parents' family is all Italians, you know, hardcore Italians. <laughs> And so we get down for dinner and it's like pizza, you know, calzones, lasagna, all this stuff. And I'm lactose intolerant. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so it's Not just a good combo. I'm looking at a table of like an absolute nightmare. And so I'm like, oh, fuck. And so I don't want to be rude. So I'm an just, Italian family. So they're like, you cannot. I had no choice, you know. <laughs> And so I just, I just started eating. I just started shoveling peas and I haven't had like cheese in two or three years. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. And so, <laughs> so I'm just going for it, whatever. We finish the deal and I make it through the <laughs> meal. And so everyone goes back to their rooms and, um, I get into bed I'm in my boxers and the whole thing. And just like, you know, you rip a fart <laughs> oh, under the sheets. And it's one of those things instantly, like Ooh. your spine stiffens a little bit and you're oh. like, Oh, Fuck, dude, like that felt like something. So then, <laughs> like something. yeah, so, um, so I'm in the bed. So I just like, I kind of panic. I drop my, I drop my underwear and I just go down the hallway to the bathroom. Luckily, like people are sleeping and all this stuff. Naked with yeah. poop on you. Yeah. So I made it. Friends, and so, family, vacation yeah, home. Yeah. Awesome. And so, so I, <laughs> I get to the bathroom and I like, you know, I do my thing and then I stand up and I'm like, all right, you know, I'm ready to go back to bed. And I just. And I, I cut one more fart standing up above the toilet <laughs> oh. and just like projectile. It looked like, a, dude, it was. He didn't it, learn his lesson. Have you ever watched Dexter? It's like a Dexter kill room in the bathroom. And I was like, oh, fuck, dude. It's a straight oh, abstract painting on the floor, you know? Like, like, no. So I'm like, holy shit. So, uh, so you know, hands and knees, oh, like cleaning God. this thing up. Making you know, it worse. Yeah, just yeah. spreading it. Yeah, yeah, spreading it. So, and, uh, <laughs> No, so I, I I'm using it. towels now. Oh, There's yeah, not yeah, right. the shower curtain. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I throw all the toilet paper in the in the fucking toilet, and I flush <laughs> it, and it clogs the toilet. Oh, it's too much toilet paper, and it's like you know it's mountain pipes, so they're like cold <laughs> oh, and frozen. No. So it's one of those things like fucking. And so I'm naked <laughs> in this bathroom. So I look for a plunger. No plunger. Nowhere in sight. There's no plunger, and the only bathroom. <laughs> is like down two flights of stairs through the living room, oh, this God. whole deal. And so I couldn't go back into my room because my buddy was in there. I didn't want to like cause a whole scene. So I just- The fact that you're naked this whole time. Yeah, yeah so this is a nightmare. Naked. Yeah, so I, I book it naked <laughs> through the cabin. No. Luckily like one person saw me, it was just my buddy like getting, you know, a glass of water out of the fridge like, or something the like that. that? Um, yeah, I just saw the whites of my ass, you know, flashing <laughs> through the lights. I saw so, a ghost. So I get down to the other bathroom. I finally get the plunger. I bring it back up and just like going to town, you know, 20 minutes, like working up a sweat, like doing the whole fucking thing. And finally I, I get the toilet to work. Didn't get caught. Nothing. I think I woke up extra early, buried my underwear in the snow and then, You've got to rid yourself of the crop. underwear. So, unless they, unless oh, they hear this podcast, the then yeah, you never yeah, told right. them ever. No, they have no oh idea. So god. this is. Uh, oh my god, that yeah. takes because I would a year or two later you'd have to, but you just wanted to just it bury just, that yeah, whole thing. Yeah, I tried. That. I'm so glad you shared that it here. Last time oh. you ate cheese. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cheese. I'd have a shot of Fernet coming up here just so we don't have another story on our hands. <laughs> oh my uh, goodness! Right now, you know. Wow. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. dude, that's a horrifying have, one. We do have a quesadilla over there. I saw it, and oh, I don't want to go anywhere near it. I'm scared just being in the same room as a quesadilla. Maybe we can get another story out. Yeah. Yeah, right. Dude, Dude so many of yeah. them are just yeah. a just an innocent fart. They mo most Half of the of stories, these stories start that way. Just eh, I was and you know what? We have a listener story that starts with a fart. Let's crank it. Let's crank it. Um, this one we comes do have, Okay, cool. We all have headings. Yeah. This one comes from just one of the most legendary listeners ever. Another all-time banger just like Kristen. It's Kimmy. It's Kimmy, Kimmy Simonian. We know her. We love her. She has a, a poopy story. Here it comes. Okay, so here's my shit my pants story. It's not really me shitting my pants, more or less. I was sitting here minding my own business. My husband decided to fart on me. So what do I do? I go to do it back to him, only it wasn't a fart. And I shit 
on his leg. <laughs> Shit all over me. It was oh bad. Goodness. It was bad. It was gross. It was putrid. <laughs> the warmth. The smell. The warmth. It was fucked up. <laughs> it was fucked up. That's it? That's, that's awesome. it, dude. Oh, that's that's amazing. Just, in and out, right to the point. That's how you tell a story. Absolutely. In and yeah. fucking out. In it, we had to warn our listeners, don't give us a six minute banger from them. Now yours was brilliant. I could have fucking <laughs> you could have done 10 more minutes because I was just like, this is fucking crushing me right now. I love the other family's house. Dude, we had something similar to that happen. Do you remember? Um this happened at our house, Daddy, what? and I feel like it was one of your friends. And you totally reminded me of this when when you said that you buried your underwear <laughs> outside. No, I remember this happened at our buddy Mike Broberg's house. This is what I'm going to tell a story from my friend Mike, who was the bass player of HB Surround Sound. He did bass for the Dirty Heads in the mm -hmm. early days, and he had total uh, homie of Daddy and I since we were just little kids. So our other buddy John, you know uh, John Gummer. John Gummer. I, I think it was John Gummer. He yeah, said his full name. Uh, we probably shouldn't have. And if I, I, you know what? And I hope I'm not wrong that it we'll wasn't John. John Gummer. All right. He took a shit in Broberg's. He shit his pants, I think, at Broberg's house when we were younger and hid his shit-filled underwear. He put it in, in their in their uh, trash can in their bathroom. Oh. And so I remember Broberg's That's like- gentle giant style. Dude, I remember Broberg when we were kids. He was like, yeah, dude, I went to throw out the little trash can in my bathroom and there was, it smelled so bad and there was just shitty underwear in there. And he's like, dude, he shit his pants at my house and just stuffed his underwear in my bath. Anyway, the shame stuff. And it just- Oh, the shame Yours is way stuff. better in the snow. That's gone. That's hard. Well, like until, until spring. Until snow melts, right, yeah. but luckily I'm You're gone. Out of dodge oh by then. You know, I'm not, yeah, I'm not there. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> Burying your underwear in the snow was a great image for me. I'm like, oh my God, the next I'd morning. I love too, like the picture, like the snow melted just enough. So a little tiny piece <laughs> of the underwear were sticking out and someone's like, hey, what's that? <laughs> yeah. And they pull it out. Oh my God. Yeah, We're having Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> like, Who did this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, right. CK on the tag. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, dude. Well, this is going to be a great segue, guys. We got another song. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, not as fuck? shitty as the. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, 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 guys, shit. this song is the shit. You're, <laughs> you yeah, see what I mean. Daddy, Come you're on. just on fire today. Come on. Hey. What a legendary shit story, dude. One of the best ever. That's a full-blown standing yeah, ovation. Casey's a legend. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. Hey, the Law Records dudes, there's been two really good Law Record. Uh, the Tunnel Vision guys oh, had a yes. great pants That's shit right. story. That's another great one. We didn't ask. Vana, we're not trying to get. We're no, not. she she told us about peeing, remember? Oh, on that's the security right. guard. We did ask her. What she peed on the security guard. She peed. Yeah, she peed her pants all. Uh, she peed herself all over guard a security guard's shoulder. The show, because she was too really? stoned, she couldn't move. So she was over the security guard's back, and she just started peeing, and it peed all. So over there her. it is. Every Law Records artist is I'll really honest. That's how you get signed yeah. by them. You have yeah. to have a yeah. good poop story, yeah. or else yeah, you're not going to get signed. That's the process. <laughs> yeah. Oh hell yeah! Well, let's get into it. What's this next song called? Uh, next song is called Fantasy. All right, let's get into it. All right, we got Sideways here, and this one's called Fantasy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Feeling up, feeling down while I think about you. Hope you think about me. Dip my toes in the sand while I feel the riptide Take it all out to sea I built this raft, won't you hop on in? We can leave this place Set everything behind, feel the warm sunshine Don't need a suitcase Tie your knot so we can push off, let everything go Hold on me, I'ma get you there if it's all I know No more stress, throw it all away, let me keep you dry Lay on back, you can look on up to my sunset sky 
Beautiful song. It really oh, yeah. is. Perfect thank you. Thank up. you. Second That's song. That's a good one. It's one of my favorites, actually. The it's ladies really will love that one. The ladies for sure. will love it. The first one's the single, and the second one's that backup single, yep. right? Yep. You're like, yeah, I think I know who this band is. And then they yeah. hit you with the banger. Daddy, what'd, you, what'd you say earlier? You're like, oh, you know what? I can <laughs> fix them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I can, they have a hard side of them, but no, I can fix them. That's right. <laughs> the first song, <laughs> who the bad boys. Yeah, yeah. And then they got I want to fix side. them. Yeah. Second yeah. song, maybe they'll fix me. Yeah. That's what she says. Yes, uh -huh. side. The oh, second man. song proves that you would never yell into anyone's ear at a no. show. Yes. You guys are the yes, definitely. between song whispers. Yeah. Before we get out of here, any plugs, anything, where can everyone find you? What's anything for the band, personal stuff? Anything? Um, yeah. Spotify, Apple music, all, all the, uh, internet streamings, uh, YouTube, Instagram, sideways music. Um, yeah, we just got on the the TikTok nice, game. Nice, nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> Our label yeah. told us to do it, so we're going to do it. <laughs> I did too. I was telling them because the Dirty Heads had vacation started going yeah, super yeah, yeah. viral on TikTok, right? Which I'm super happy about. Yeah. So the label and shit, so you got to do TikTok. Got to do TikTok. So I fucking made a TikTok page. I did my vacation TikTok, taken down one day later. Yeah. Because there was a bong in the background of oh, my no video. Way. So they took my video down. I now have zero videos on TikTok. Oh, I had one yeah. for a bit, but um but yeah we got a new record coming out on law records I'm not sure when it's gonna drop we'll release singles throughout the summer and um yeah that's pretty much it nice man well we'll have links to every you know for everyone to find you guys mm -hmm. and all that good stuff but and then when the album is ready to drop you guys are welcome to come back we'll be back anytime oh, yeah, yeah. yeah anytime yeah. thank Let's you guys so much yeah man thank yeah. you guys and yeah i guess before we jump out of here, uh, we do have some q a from our uh, patreon members guys if you do want a chance again to uh ask questions on the show that we will answer hop on over to our patreon <laughs> sign up it helps the show get going and uh lots of other fun stuff going on over there can i well. read one you can i like the. i've never listened to your music what <laughs> song or album should i start with <laughs> oh wow <laughs> definitely not the first one, the first one. yeah I almost forgot about the Q&A. I was like, I all right, before we did, get out of here, but you know what? Now we're going to do the Q&A and we will answer that very question in one second here. Questions. Woo -hoo -hoo. Ask us any question you want. <laughs> How'd you like that song, Dustin? That was great. Or Duddy P? I'm Duddy sorry. P, yes. I go by <laughs> Duddy P now. Dude, let's tackle that one first. So that's, that's I, I funny. didn't see that one. Who who sent that one in? Um, Duddy's little scissor sister. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's our Florida girl. Um, right on. Um, yeah, definitely. I would say the newer stuff. Maybe just start with the Kaleo song with Peppers is a, our newest one that's out. Don't go to anything before 2015. <laughs> but yeah, oh, anything man. new is, is probably pretty good. 
That is that is awesome. <laughs> How um, funny is that? <laughs> let's see here. Kristen Haggett, who gave us that amazing story. So how could I dare the skip your question killer. today? Happy Wednesday, everyone, because uh, this will come out Wednesday. What is a cool souvenir you bought while out on the road? Plus, could you guys give my boyfriend, Shane, a shout out today? Today is his birthday. Thanks. Happy birthday, Shane. Happy birthday, Yeah, Shane. happy birthday, Shane. And just for you listening, we're not going to normally give birthday shout outs. No. That's not a thing, so don't start asking. I was going to say something mean. I couldn't come up with she gave a happy us such, birthday, Shane. She gave us such a good story. Yeah, you can't. I had to give her the shout out. Uh, what's the cool souvenir I bought like, out on the road? I have one that I, I really remember. I have I have an idea of what I wanted to start like this uh, cool coffee table you know, thing for uh, old school baseball mitts. I don't know if you guys have seen these before. They're awesome. I went to some random pawn shop in some small town, and I found like a baseball mitt from like the 1920s or something. And it's like the coolest fucking thing ever. So now that's my thing. I want to collect old baseball mitts and I'm going to make like a cool little uh, coffee table thing out of them. Yeah. Nice. That's pretty amazing. I have another thing that I know that you bought that you still have that you, the hat, the hat, that fuzzy ear oh, hat. That. It's, over your, there. it's over there. Duddy has the hat that he bought in, this was like the first tour when the Dirty Heads, when Lay Me Down hit, and it was like their first big nationwide tour. And Duddy bought this fuzzy eared hat. He still has it, and he's worn it on the show a couple times. I have. You know, I, I like that's I a funny do have one. that. Yeah, you do have that. Dude, that's true. This necklace, this is a nothing necklace, right? I, um, I, I like elephants. So I found this necklace at uh, Pike's Market in Seattle. It's like that market that's right along the ocean. Yeah. This was 2006. I was touring with HB Surround Sound, and I used to wear this little. Damn. And I've had it around my neck. I Ever probably since. wore it on my finger for like a month and it turned yeah. green because it's like a shitty fake necklace thing. Yeah. And I've had it around my neck ever since 2006. That's dope. So I guess that's the, my favorite thing I bought right on tour. Let's see here. Uh, Jacob Disney says, uh -huh. Jake, any tips for an up and coming barber? And Duddy, would you ever let Jake cut your hair? I think people have asked that before. Yeah. Uh, also, everyone follow my barber. Oh, Jacob. Oh, my shameless. Oh, my shameless. Fuck. Trying to use you guys. Faded <laughs> Jake. It is strictly Knott's Berry Farm for me from here yeah. on out. Because I'm faded Jake because I'm faded and I'm Jake and I'm doing fades. Oh, you guys bro. got on. Oh, faded Dude. fade master. You fade master. Uh, I don't know if I'd, I'd let, I don't get haircuts. So yeah, I mean, dude, if you wanted a haircut, I'm sure he'd be like, Hey Jake, cut sure. my hair. Uh, but he doesn't get haircuts. Cut my hair at home. I, I put it in a little bit of a ponytail situation and my wife goes, bink, bink. Every six months we do that. <laughs> <laughs> and dude, tips for the up and coming barber, like barbering is one of those weird things. You're, uh, I guess my tip is just, uh, here's something that somebody told me that I really loved every once in a while as a barber, you might have slow days or slow times when you're an up and coming barber. As you say, when I first started, I would have days where I'm like, man, I did two haircuts today. And then obviously a couple of years in you're booked every day. Right. But I remember uh, my owner said this to me and the, the new barbers and he's all, here's the thing about barbering too. He's all, you're always going to be working on an average. Like when you start out, your monthly average will be so much as you get better and better. Your monthly average goes up. He's all, don't look at barbering day to day. Don't go. I only did two cuts today because how it works out is you almost always end up doing the same amount of cuts that month. Yeah. You're going to make the same amount at the end of the month. You might have a slow day. And the next day will be day. super busy. And he was right. Like when I first started, I remember it was just one of the things he told me. He's all, Hey, you know, when you start out, just don't get caught up. If you have a slow day, yeah. keep going. Cause you're going to have a, a banger of a day and that it all evens out. And eventually you'll just be booked. And I remember it was like the, like day one, he probably told yeah. me that. And it stuck with me and I was like, Oh, it's good advice. And he was right. Yep you always end up making the same amount at the end of the month. And eventually you're so booked up that you make more just as much as you can by the yeah. end of the month. However many cuts you want to do, yeah. that's what you'll get. So yeah, just stick with it. Don't think of it as if you have a bad day, just know that you're going to have a good day probably tomorrow or the next day and it'll even it out. And I eventually you you'll can be just sailing. apply that to life. Anything in life. Yeah. yeah, yeah just, big yeah, time. That's totally. just great advice, period. Because you do get barbers that get bogged down in that. And yeah. then you know, they'll be like, fuck, man, I'm dead today, man. This sucks. You know, and it, it can, you know, you want to make money. Don't let it happen. You're going to have your busy days. You're right. But that is everything in life. Love it. Yeah. Jesse Rules says, what has been your favorite song to record and which one is the most personal to you guys? 
What about you got? You got? Do you have one, Dustin? Dirty um, P. Um, I would probably say fantasy. Actually, the the newer one we have. Um, it's definitely a more like personal subject and just like super mellow. So like we usually kind of write in a different style. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of like more darker edge, more like grimy baseline reggae style. This one was a very more chill, mellow song that I um. I just really enjoy like the sound of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like very pretty sounding the whole way through and it's, it's not reggae at all. And uh, I think it's just a great song. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. Um, let's see here. What was it? So your favorite song to record. So <clears throat> this one, it, it's not one of my favorites and it's not like a personal one to me. I love this song. It's great. I love playing this one live as well, but recording it, we had so much fun. It was off our new album, uh, Supermoon crowbar hotel. Um, we did a handful of the songs on this new album. We recorded them live all at the same time in the same room all together and just live recorded them. And that was one of them. And we had so much fun recording that one, like with Jared, like whistling the, the chorus part. And I don't know, there was something that we, the, the vibe in that room when we recorded that track was just so perfect. And we had such a great time recording it. Um, yeah, that's mine. Sick. Group vocals are so fun. Yeah. Like the few punks, like some of the punk songs we had in, in HB Surround Sound back in the day when you're, you know, when there's going to be like a group like, hey, or anything. Oh, yeah. It's so fucking corny. You're looking oh, at each yeah. other and it's like, three, two, one, <laughs> hey, you know, and you're like, yeah, this is fucking fun. <laughs> but I, dude, I would say my favorite song that, I, from, that I've done right now is um, from my project surf cobras that's online uh, and let's go to the beach the surf cobras song just search jake bushnell anywhere for music you know and you'll find it surf cobras let's go to the beach i feel, i just when i listen to that i'm like hey that's one of my best start to finish songs and i've got i played the drums on that guitar and did all the vocals there I, so i did almost all the instruments nice i love that one dope uh where are we at here let's see here elizabeth pratt says do you add sugar to your cereal whoa no. Uh, when did uh, we, we did when uh, as kids, because my mom always got the gross kind with no flavor. That's funny. <laughs> no. uh, I remember Cheerios when I was young. I love Cheerios yeah. just plain now. But when I was a kid, I would either put honey or I remember sprinkling yeah, some sugar, dude. I yeah. Did too. I don't know if I, I, I remember doing some honey on the Cheerios when yeah. we didn't have honey nut Cheerios. Yep. I don't know if I remember sugar. <laughs> And then I do don't remember let my kids think about that. I don't no. want to walk in and just see them with spoon. Dude, my, yeah. my buddy, my buddy, my son has this buddy, Jackson. They're like best friends. And he comes over a lot after school. And uh, they're in this new thing where we want to make lemonade. But I, I'm on to them, dude. Because every time they make lemonade and I walk into the kitchen and it just feels like I'm like on like an air hockey table. I'm just like yeah. gliding across. I'm just walking on sugar. I'm just like, what the fuck? And I go in there and they just dumping spoonfuls of <laughs> yeah. sugar like you're not making lemon no <laughs> you're making sugar water yeah they're making yeah. sunny d yeah <laughs> seriously uh melissa perfect says this question is for both of you what's your favorite type of cake who who fucking cares oh yeah. wow seriously whatever I kind I'm not a cake of person yeah. no yeah. i'm not dude right? yeah i mean pie yeah, is, pie is yeah, better than cake but pie, i guess it's not a cake Whatever oh, cake man. we can throw into your face for yeah. asking this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit come on. cake. How about that? <laughs> oh, Melissa is pretty awesome. So we, She's awesome. But we love to make fun of her. Is not we love awesome. to make fun this of her. This question is terrible. No, the question is horrifying. Great. She's great. really bad. Uh, we're so don't judge on. her, guys, yeah. okay? Yeah. We gave her that name perfect. We're going to take it back real fast, Melissa. One more, huh, Daddy? One more. This is the last question, guys, uh, before we get into this. Uh, Thank you guys again for listening. Hope you enjoyed the show. Check out Sideways everywhere you can find them. And we will be you. back next week. Last question. Jake Lapointe says, when is DH and Sideways going to do a collaboration? Look at oh, that, yeah. Jake. That's what I like to hear. I think both of your bands would gel together. I think we would as well. I think it would be a I think a Duddy P, Duddy B would be oh, absolutely insane. Oh, dude. <laughs> Rap battle. Oh, Duddy B versus Duddy dude. P. Yeah, we would love to, man. That'd be great. Wu-Tang style. You guys uh, just back and forth. No chorus. <laughs> no fucking chorus. We no don't chorus. do choruses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We just add more bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right on. B right versus on. P. Hell yeah. Thank you guys again for coming dude, by. What man. a banger of a awesome. show, dude. Dude, thank you guys for having us, man. Yeah. This has been great. Fuck yeah, man. Outro. We'll see you guys next week. Love Boom. you guys. Peace. Peace. Yeah. Yeah.